My name is Catherine Rabi and I work with the Sargeska University Hospital's Department of Neurosurgery and Sargeska Academy in Gothenburg, Sweden. I was interested in neurosurgery. Uh, actually, I'm a math and physics person and um, I became interested in medicine by becoming interested in neuroscience and reading an article as a high school kid in the school library on um, neurosurgery in National Geographic. And from there I went to medicine and eventually into Parkinson research. We had a period of time where we could uh, do an elective and I chose to do that in the Department of Neurosurgery. And the first time I saw that, uh, it was kind of love at first sight for me. So uh, I ended up spending two weeks there, being in long surgeries and even getting to assist surgeries. And from there, um, afterwards, I have become more and more interested, decided to do another elective in US, Minneapolis, um, and uh, eventually chose neurosurgery as a career. I've, uh, been a neurosurgeon for a year and uh, after that I have done my fulfilled my PhD thesis in uh, neurosurgery. The key findings of the paper is that there is uh, no measurable effect of surgery on neuropsychological um, or balanced tests. Um, so we evaluated the patients very thoroughly to start with. We did a clinical evaluation with, through the Department of Neurology and then the same team evaluated all of the patients uh, with neuropsychological testing and motor function testing before and after surgery in a prospective setting. And um, from there, there were also some patients who we offered surgery and they didn't want to undergo surgery. And at the end, we have seen that not only there is not, no measurable effect in, in those who have uh, undergone surgery, but also patients who did not choose to undergo surgery have also improved over time. So these are the key findings of, of the study. Arachnoid cysts have been a controversy in, in neurosurgery for many years, and the reason for that is that there are uh, many retrospective studies reporting good results from surgery, up to 85 to 90 percent um, show an improvement. Some of those studies are not aimed to evaluate exactly the patients, they are to evaluate the surgical technique. Uh, but that's another issue that, that, we, need, that we have looked at. Um, is subjective improvement a good endpoint to and how do we evaluate surgical results? Uh, so there has not been a prospective study going through the patients so thoroughly as we have done in our study. And doing that, we have found that there is no difference before and after surgery, even when the patients sometimes experience an improvement. And when you look at the question whether they have improved or not, around 77% say that they have improved. But if you look at uh, if they have actually been cured of at least one of their symptoms, it's only 43%. And having that in mind uh, and thinking about complications and long-term morb morbidity that the surgery um, might have, then we need to keep that in mind and we need to conduct further studies. I think that arachnoid cysts are not a single entity. I think that um, my research has also uh, been focused on studying the ultrastructure of the cyst wall. And from there, we can see that um, there are different types of arachnoid cysts. I believe that people who have focal neurological problems have a different kind of arachnoid cyst than uh, people who show up with headaches or balance disturbance and generally uh, symptoms that are multifactorial and cannot be uh, pinpointed to the arachnoid cyst. Uh, so I think we need to also go into more research into that area and perhaps we should not operate uh, on vague indications for arachnoid cysts such as headache. Um, comparing that a little bit to spine surgery, uh, we don't operate people for neck pain or back pain. Uh, so why should we operate people for, for headache when it comes to uh, intracranial surgery? Uh, so that's something that we should look at further into. The next step is to continue doing research. I'm working on a book chapter and also I'm going to continue um, the work that I have uh, undertaken with arachnoid cysts. 
Uh, also, I think another interesting area which is similar to arachnosis is incidental findings. Um, we are doing more and more MRIs based on headache or uh, based on trauma and we are finding things, uh, we are finding small tumors, we are finding arachnoid cysts, we are finding pineal cysts. What should we do with uh, all of these accidental or incidental findings? Um, there hasn't been much research into that, but we have a population-based study, hopefully we can, we can look into that. Of course, I think that uh, women are still scarce in neurosurgery. I think uh, um, men and women should work together uh, for bringing forward the neurosurgical field. I think sometimes women are not measured with the same measuring stock and it's been, they have had a tough time in neurosurgery. Uh, and for that reason, women quit neurosurgery. Um, I think we should all strive towards a future where gender is not an issue because we need passionate people in neurosurgery. We need people who can lead studies and be curious. Uh, and we can't afford to lose them based on gender. I think that there has been many good uh, talks and presentations. Uh, obviously, uh, highlight is sometimes always to listen to the neurosurgical giants like Osama al Mefti. Uh, and also, I think Professor Marianne Euler um, has had an excellent talk on ICP and what is a normal value, which is really important. She is a great role model and, and an excellent scientist. The EANS community is uh, very close to my heart and, and obviously very important. I think ENS has done uh, very good things for young neurosurgeons, offering them opportunities through fellowships. Uh, obviously the ENS Research Prize is a good way of highlighting the neurosurgeons and young neurosurgeons uh, endeavors. I think that we have strengths within the European uh, community of neurosurgery uh, collaborating on studies and our way forward is uh, to do more collaboration and to do, conduct multi-center studies. We also need to develop our registries in, in quality registries in neurosurgery. So. Uh, I think that Scandinavian countries are a role model when it comes to, to registries and we need to develop that in, in several other countries and within Europe as well. Because the way um, that we can use that is to evaluate what we're doing, our surgical results, but also we have new and endless possibilities of, of conducting uh, important research through registries. Uh, we can also do what is, I think, the future for research in neurosurgery, and that is um, the randomized controlled trials through the registries.